Well, hello everyone. I think today uh, we're going to take the Yezu 101 plane since it's fairly a great working radio and there's no problems that's uh, that I know of. It transmits and receives just like it's supposed to. So we're going to go ahead and do an alignment on this one because I want to put this station here on the air before long and um, go ahead and get it running. Now, to do the alignment, the first thing we got to do is remove all the sheet metal because we'll need to get into a lot of places here to, uh, to start at to do the alignment to this. So, and in this part of the uh, alignment, we're going to be concentrating on the front end. This is going to be the receive and transmit, um, the transmit buffer and the receive front end. And what we're going to look at, so the part that we're going to look at is right here. And you can see there's, down on the uh, bottom right hand corner, we're going to see T102, T103, and T104. So basically, this is the section that we're going to uh, be adjusting. This is T103. T102 and T104. This is the uh, transmit buffer, the beginning of it, and the receive front end. But the first thing we got to do is get in here and do away with this glue that's on these little spring shafts. See, as this turns, you can see those coils go up and down. But what we're going to have to do is better break this glue loose and then tune each one up and down until we get everything set exactly correct. So what I use to uh, soften up the glue on these is acetone. And it's best to lay the radio over on its side once you get the sheet metal off so that this is sitting this way and apply acetone like this because this sits this way in the radio with the sheet metal off you can set it up on this end and that way the acetone will just drip right down you can put some uh, paper towel or something on your bench to keep that acetone from falling the other way in the radio and getting on something that we don't want to get it on so just demonstrating here Make sure you use this in a well ventilated area. We'll come here and we'll soak this glue with this acetone. Just keep it good and wet and it will eventually soften up and you can uh, peel it right off. Take this pair of side cutters See, it's already soft enough now that it's fairly easy to get off. And it did not take a whole lot of uh, work. You might have to uh, apply some more acetone as you get down in there. So you can soften it up right there at the, uh, the spring. And all it's got is a piece of steel wire running across it that that spring is up against. Okay, I got all the uh, glue off this first one. And let me run this back up. Now you can see, I, you can screw it for fine tuning it. And you can see the spring will turn at the top or you can simply just grab it in the radio this won't be going up and down so don't worry about that but you can just grab it and move it up and down like you want it once you get it set and you've done adjustment then put some uh, 
fingernail polish or something back on there uh, wax is not that good fingernail polish works pretty good it's easy to get off and you can uh, let that soak into the spring and that'll hold it back in place again as you can see I got the covers off the radio now and I got it set up on the side that the handle would normally be on what I'm gonna do is just lay a piece of paper towel down here in case some that acetone gets on this mat it will not destroy it and I'll just start Soaking that glue down. And see this way the acetone do not go down into the uh, the coils and loosen up the spring from that iron core. So now I've got all three coils so that you can adjust them. Now normally you wouldn't adjust these coils. These are usually set from the factory. And um, <laughs> when it came from the factory they probably set the best that they could be set. But now you have to remember if you're going on you change a lot of components uh, and plus other components you know vary over time especially as old as this radio is you would need to adjust these okay guys from the uh, last clip it's been a week uh, <laughs> I had some technical difficulties here with this radio now you remember in the YouTube video this radio was receiving and transmitting well I came in here to start the alignment process uh, you already seen where we went ahead and removed all the glue off the coils and then uh, the next day I come in here and I was going to start doing the alignment well, the first thing you got to do is tune it up on the high band of 10 meters I noticed there was no output I said, okay so uh, started looking and I said well maybe one of the tubes has failed so I went ahead and just replaced all the tubes just to see still nothing uh, no output looking at it on the spectrum analyzer I can see a signal but there's nothing coming out the antenna jack so I went in here and I replaced the bias resistor and L4 was a little bit burnt so I went ahead and made up a new one it's a 55 ohm resistor with uh, two turns of wire around the uh, resistor and I installed that okay so uh, right here you can see L4 and L4 is just uh, two wraps of wire around a uh, 55, 56 ohm resistor, whatever. The uh, schematic says 56, but they're actually 55 ohm resistors. So I went ahead and replaced that because, you know, it looked burnt. And uh, the bias resistor did not look too good. It was right here on 1400 ohm. So we went ahead and replaced that. Made no difference. And that's when I noticed that the tube was turning cherry red the driver tube that is so I said okay something's going on here that sounds like uh, no bias going to the driver tube and it should be about minus 20 volts now in the schematic it tells you nothing it tells you about setting the bias on the driver I mean on the final tubes but there's not much in the um, manual about bias on the uh, driver tube well it does have a bias of minus 20 volts and you should check that from time to time so as you can see I raised the uh, two boards up here so I could get down at the bottom of the tube so I can have a better look at it okay so you can see the bottom of the tube right here and right down the other side and pin 2 is the bias pin and when I got in here and started looking there's a coil here another inductor you can see it moving around there well that coil happens to be 
L1 right here and you can see it snakes down here to pin 2 of the driver tube and that's where we get our minus 20 volts for our bias on the driver tube everything looks good when you leave pin 2 and you go up and you go to the first part of L1 it's the second part of L1 when it's connected to that has the problem <laughs> so like I showed L1 see it's wiggling around that is completely loose and the top wire where it goes down it's broken from its connection point and that's lost the bias on the tube so now I'm hoping I can fix that, put this back together. I'm going to have to check that 12BY7, make sure it didn't burn it up, and uh, see if I can get this thing back tuned up. Okay, guys, so uh, here's the coil. I'm using the little dino light, dino light excuse me, to uh, focus in on this, like I'm moving around. So you can see L1 there, and you can see this top lead and you see it right there hanging in space just flapping around in the breeze not connected to anything and it connects right there where you see that blob of sorter right next to that other round body component which I think is a resistor but that's where that flying lead right there on the left hand side for the connect to so that broke off somewhere doing moving the radio after I took it off the bench from getting it working okay guys that's a tight little hole to get down into but uh, I think I got it soldered in so it won't come back loose at least we hope it is so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and put all this back together and see if uh, how bad I've damaged the tubes hopefully uh, not too bad because I'm running short on uh, 12BY7s, I don't even think I have, I think I got one spare, I believe, uh, I may be wrong, but I don't have a whole lot of them, and you know, 6Js, yeah, 6s are getting slow, and I need to look, because I think I got some 6KD6s in the shop somewhere, <laughs> hasn't been used or looked at in a long time, so I need to search around, see if I still got some of those, because the 6KD6 will work in the FT-101. Okay guys, all this back together. Uh, the radio is not tuned up, so I'm going to just hit the uh, mark switch. I got it on tune to see if there's anything coming up here. Let me turn the carrier down about halfway. Oh yes. That is now working. So. <laughs> I can go ahead and get this radio tuned up. I need to put the shields back on. You know, the uh, tube shield and the shield on the bottom. I'm trying to, you know, case in as much of that as you can because when I start going full power in the dummy load, with the computer so close, it knocks the USB ports out. And the mouse and keyboard doesn't work and you have to shut the computer down, turn it back on. But, you know, that's because this RF is so close to the computer. I need to uh, do something about that. I don't know what yet, but I need to get the computer a little bit away from to test it, or even try to put some grounding and there might be something on it because uh, you know it's sitting just right there, and uh, you know here we are right here. So yeah, uh, RF will affect the computers. Okay guys, so here's the procedure of uh, aligning the uh, front end section of the radio, which is going to consist of the uh, transmitter and receiver. You're looking at this item here. This is how it sets in the radio, just like it is here. This is T1, 2, and 3. And we're going to adjust those for maximum on transmit and receive. But first, what you do, you put this on 10D, tune the radio up on transmit, 
then once you get it all tuned up and when you uh, key the radio and I see you do not want to draw no more than 100 milliamps uh, if you see that you're drawing more than 100 milliamps turn your carrier down keep it 100, milli 100 milliamps maximum do not let it go over or you start compromising the tubes so when you get everything set you'll note the positions of the uh, controls here your uh, plate load and your pre-select and you can see the pre-select here is just below the uh, 10 so our pre-select knob is right here pointing just below the 10 now what they want you to do is turn this up to it's on the high end of 10 and 11 what I normally do is peek it out where it's at then I'll go back once it's done and I'll line this pointer to the band it's supposed to be at so you can do it either way um, when you turn this up to the high you know all your power receives when drop down then you go to I just I just leave it where it's at I'll go back loosen the coupling underneath put the knob where I wanted that where it's pointing on the uh, band that it should be tuned up on and then I tighten it back down but like I said you can do that either way you want the next thing you're supposed to do is take TC5 and put it at half capacitance Okay, so TC5 is going to be your 10 liter mixer driver input capacitor. And that's that first one right here for 10 liters. And what you want to do is set that at about half capacitance. You can look in your manual and it'll show you what the capacitor plates look like and how you, how you would adjust it. Um, it'll show both rings on both sides and what you want to do is rotate it until it's halfway on both of those. This one is already set at half capacitance, so I do not have to uh, mess with it at all. Okay, so uh, I had to turn the fan on. It's got a switch and cut this fan off and on. So the cage is getting hot. This fan is noisy. You'll have to just bear with it. I'm sorry, but uh, that's the way it's gonna have to be. So what you want to do now, is that since the radio is all tuned up, our capacitor T5 is set halfway. We're going to tune T2 and T3 for maximum output on the meter. Okay, so we can see our watt meter up there. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to switch it from PT to the marks. And we're going to tune T2 just by turning the coil. And don't do that, you know, about 10 seconds at a time. Okay, so uh, now that we got this situated, what we'll do is go to marks and tune T2 for maximum output on the meter. And that's about max right there on that one. Okay, I made sure that uh, T3 is adjustable. I just put a little acetone on it and we'll go to uh, MOX and we'll tune that and maximum output and you can see just how far that one was off. So that's how simple it is to tune the uh, T2 and T3. Uh, you just got to make sure you cut that glue soft enough so you can turn it. All right, what we want to do now is go to TC15 and set that for half capacitance, just like it's setting right now. That one's already set. I didn't have to even touch it. A lot of times you'll find that the factory settings on some of this, unless it's been golden screwdriver, you'll find a lot of this is already set. And what this is, this is part of the antenna tuning for the uh, receiver section. So once that's set at half capacitance. Okay, so what we want to do now is... Uh, Set our signal generator 
at 30 megahertz and get it 30% modulation 1000 hertz tone but we want this thing set down to about one microvolt so we go to our output turn the output on and the reason why we want it at one microvolt is so that we don't turn the AGC on we want just a minimum signal so we can hear it. Then when we go to uh, tune it, rotate the uh, VFO for maximum signal strength on the meter, or you can tune it the sideband and zero beat it. Okay, so what we want to do now is uh, set our signal generator at 30 megahertz we got it 30 percent modulation thousand hertz tone but we want this thing set down to about one microvolt so we go to our output turn the output on okay guys so uh what we we'll gonna do now is go ahead and tune t1 for maximum noise and maximum meter reading you can see the uh meter here set way down here we're about an f3 i turn the volume up Now you see how much that meter came up. It's almost uh, about 6.5, from 3 to 6.5, so that teamed up real quick. Okay guys, so your next step is, you go right back to uh, the transmit mode, and you adjust T1 and T2 again for maximum transmit. Go back to receive mode. And then just enough signal to uh, hear it and see a deflection on the meter and T, turn T1 again and tune it. And you might want to do that two, three, four times until you see where everything is maxed out. Alright guys, uh, what we're going to do now, I've gone to the uh, TNA band and I've got the VFO set for 28 megahertz. And what we're going to do now is go back into transmit and we set the preset down to the lower end of the 10 11 meter band and we're going to adjust TC5 again for maximum output on the 10 meter 28 megahertz band is right there now we'll go back to the generator and we'll put in a frequency of 28.0 megahertz Alright guys, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to peak TC15 for maximum receive on 28 megahertz. And I don't know if y'all can see the meter or not. So I'll turn the uh, output on and we'll turn the volume up. And I'll tune TC15 for maximum noise. So uh, now that you got that done, go back to transmit, do TC5 again, go back to receive, do TC15. Do that a couple of times until they both beat back. 
and once you're comfortable with uh, 10A, go back to 10D, repeat these steps, uh, just like in the manual, uh, steps 1 through 4, and uh, repeat everything again, and you might do that a couple of times, but that'll get the 10 meter band working the way it's supposed to. Okay guys, we're on the 15 meter band, we got the radio tuned up on 15 meters, uh, same as before, got everything set. So what we're going to do, we're going to tune TC4 and TC9 for maximum output on the 15 meter band at 2100 megahertz. This second trimmer here is TC4. The second trimmer here in the bottom is TC9. So we're going to go into uh, marks. If I get the screwdriver in, key up. Unkey. Play the TC9. Key it up. Unkey. Coming to carry your way down now because we went up above 100 milliamps but we've done it very quickly now we'll go back and we'll do it again so i will tell you uh, those two tremors are very very touchy on 15 meters you know careful you'll drop right out to zero and you have to sit here and turn your carrier back up until you find it and drop your carrier back down after you peek them out so yeah it's a little tough to find okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the generator and we're going to set the generator for 21.0 megahertz okay so what we want to do now i've got a signal going into it we're going to adjust tc14 for maximum audio and TC14 on the paper is that second tremor and that's going to be in our antenna selection that's going to be this tremor right here Get that screwdriver in there it's a little tight turn the volume up Okay guys, and again, once you get that set, go back to transmit, do the same thing, go back to receive, do the same thing on that 15 meter band, and just keep working back and forth until you get those spot on just like they need to be. Okay guys, we're going to do the exact same thing for the 20 meter band, we're going to be adjusting TC3. TC8 for transmit and then TC13 for the receiver. So uh, TC8 is the third tremor up. TC3 is this third tremor up. So third one here and the third one here will be setting the uh, 20 meter output okay so we'll go to transmit make sure we blow 100 milliamps we'll go to TC3 and you see just how touchy that is No. 
We're going to go to TC8. And it says the third one up. And that was picked out pretty good. Now, when you get that done, go back and uh, do it again. Just like in the other steps. Now, I will tell you, TC3 is acting a little funny. I don't know if I can spray it and make it work better. But when you see one that's doing that, most of the time, that trimmer needs replacing. And we might have to go back and do that. We'll go back to transmit. And you can see just how it's acting. In fact, I'm going to try a ceramic trimmer on it just to see if I make sure that that screwdriver wasn't affecting it. It shouldn't. No, it's not affecting it. Let's see if I can push on the trimmer. It changes. So yeah, that trimmer is going to need replacing. Because what that's going to do, I mean, if you ever get it set and bump the radio, it's going to change. And I can't find no happy medium to get it right. Now, since this is a non buttered 101, you know, your manual will tell you to adjust T105 and 106. But the problem with the plain 101 is that there's one of those we do not have. Right, looking at this schematic, you can see 106 is right here. That's this last coil here. And 105 is right here. The plain non levered 101 does not have teeth. 105 so you're just adjust 106 for the transmit which has already been done in this radio there's no need of a you know showing any more steps on this we've shown enough to 10 through 20 meters uh 40 you do 80 then you do 40 then you do 160 and it's all the same just pick the uh trimmers that it tells you to and adjust them just like we did in all the other steps, but on the plane 101, there is no T105. So on the 80 meter band, you would adjust those at uh, 4 megahertz, and then you would drop down to 3.5 megahertz and adjust two more trimmers, and you would go back and forth with the transmit receive on those two frequencies until you get it all done next thing you do you will go to the uh, 40 meter band set it at 7 megahertz adjust TC2 and TC7 for maximum transmitter then you go to uh, 7.150 on the pre-select and adjust L33 for maximum power output then you go back and you set the uh, receive at 7 megahertz you adjust TC12 for uh, maximum audio output. It's that simple. Band, um, uh, 160 meter band, with a 1.9 kilohertz. Uh, adjust TC28, TCCM for maximum output. And uh, you go to 1900 kilohertz and you adjust TC29. 160 band, you adjust TC28, TC10 for maximum output. 
and then uh, you will go to uh, receive and adjust TC29 for maximum receive it's that simple and doing the front end and main output alignment so when you find out if you ever you know you got a 101 and so like you got 70 watts on one band 60 on another 80 on another this step will take care of that now I'm not going to go through mo no more the uh, tuning on this part because I know we have at least one bad trimmer that's going to have to be replaced and when I replace that trimmer I'm probably going to have to start back and do this whole alignment section that we just done again Okay guys, that's going to conclude this segment of the uh, alignment of the uh, front end circuits for transmit and receive. Now, once you get all that done, don't forget to go back and put something on these uh, spring coils to keep them in place. You can use a fingernail polish. Uh, I say I've seen people use wax. Uh, wax gets hot and does not hold that good fingernail polish works good and can be you know removed with uh acetone just make sure you got the radio sitting on the side when you put something in there so nothing runs down into the coil and lock it in place so guys i hope you uh learned something on this uh it's a learning experience every time you do one of these i mean at least for myself it is because you find out different problems you know <laughs> The main key is when you are lining something for everything to be perfect. But as you see, we found some bad tremors in this one. So we know we're going to have to uh, replace some of them. Then I'm going to have to do the alignment again. Anyway, guys, I hope, uh, hope this helps. And we'll catch you in the next video. Bye now.